a lot of you have asked for it so here it is butternut squashes homegrown and organic turned into butternut flour or butternut powder stick around and see how i do it okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to take a clean cloth and i've got the butternuts in the sink with water already and just give them a good scrub down just to get rid of all that grime and grit and whatever else is on them and just making sure that they're nice and clean for when i get them here on the bench and cut them and put them onto baking trays now with the sink always make sure you clean your sink beforehand and i've also got my oven preheated now well preheating now so you might hear the hum of the oven in the background as i'm doing this thanks so now it's time to cut these in half long ways get them onto the trays and into the preheated oven but before i do that i just wanted to share a tip with you that i like to do here and that is with my halves as you can see here i will face it upwards not down on the tray now my reasoning behind this is that i believe that what's going to happen is the moisture is coming out and so is some of the flavor and that's going to go onto the tray and i don't want the flavor on the tray or anywhere else i want it in the actual butternut itself so by turning it face up like this the water can evaporate although i'm going to have aluminium foil over the top but the flavor is going to stay in the flesh so that's the plan anyway so i'm just going to grab my cook's knife and cut these butternuts into halves like so there we go and then all I'm doing is using a soup spoon to scoop out those seeds. And I'll just continue this process until I'm done with all of them. I forgot to mention that with the stalks, I just snap them off and throw them away. Like so. You can do this with any type of pumpkin really. Now, I prefer to use butternut pumpkins. Well, we call them butternut pumpkins here in Australia, but obviously people say butternut squash elsewhere. I just prefer to grow these. I do grow pumpkins as well, but generally I grow more butternuts because of the flavor and just the easiness of cleaning them and peeling them and things like this. So there we go. Two trays of butternuts washed, cleaned, and ready to go in the oven. I'm just going to get some aluminium foil, place that over the top of each tray, and get them in this oven behind me. Oh yes, look at that. I just want to scoop that up and eat it right now. All right, so I'm currently editing this video, and what I've just discovered is that the files are actually corrupted in this section of the video. So what I've done is those dark patches on the butternut that you see, I've scraped those off and I've actually eaten them for lunch because I don't want any little dark specks in my powder. It's not actually probably going to affect it that much as far as flavor goes, but just for, I guess, cosmetic reasons, I don't want to be using a powder that's got little specks in it. So yeah, those dark patches I've taken off and those dark patches are there because life happens and I got distracted and I left it in the oven for about two hours and two hours is way too long. A good 90 minutes is a way to go with this sort of thing. Because the file is corrupted, I'm unable to show you the section here where I scoop everything out and make a beautiful puree. But what I've done is I've just got a soup spoon and scooped out the flesh and put it into the blender and then used a medium to high speed and blended it and you're about to see the beautiful puree that resulted from that. So here I am the next day and the butternut stayed in the fridge overnight and it kept quite well and it didn't actually seep out any water, which was fantastic. So I'm really happy with this new blender, the Optimum 8200 from Fruity. It looks like it really has given me a silky smooth puree. And sometimes I find that if I do make a puree with say butternuts or other pumpkins and I put them aside, it does seep out a little bit of water around the edges and possibly on top. But this has been in the fridge overnight and not an issue. So I'm just going to spoon my puree onto the mat. And that will do for now. And then just to make it a bit easier for myself, I'll just start to spread it out with the back of the spoon, like so. Now, the mat that I'm using is a food grade, I believe it's like a silicon sheet, I think. And I pretty much got that online 
bought it from Amazon actually and I just cut them to size and as you can see I didn't cut them that great they could have gone a bit more to the edges but hey it works so when I'm dehydrating peas dehydrating corn those little things aren't going to fall through the gaps in the wire you might be able to see if I lift it you can see the gaps here on the wire so obviously peas and corn for instance are going to fall through when I dehydrate them so yeah just using these mats here that stops that from happening and then with purees like this I can put it onto these mats and it keeps its shape and dehydrates quite well so when putting a mix like this onto these trays I can be quite confident that it's not going to slip through the wire and make a mess in the dehydrator so all I do now is I'll give it a basic scrape first try to hold the scraper at an even level just to get a consistent thickness across the puree so I might go backwards and forwards a couple of times that's fine I've got the time I can do it actually I'm just going to move this bowl out of the way just so I've got a bit more freedom to move my hands around so yeah I'm just scraping it getting a consistent level with this puree keeping it away from the edges just in case it does spread for whatever reason I just scrape the excess onto the bowl and then what I'll do for instance it's a little close to the edge there for me it shouldn't spread but I like to give myself a little room anyway so I just come in and spread across now I've got nine trays in my dehydrator so I eyeball the amount of mix to the amount of trays and if I can I try to get it so it all goes into the one session with the dehydrator look you don't have to be absolutely thorough and get a spirit level and measure it and do stuff like that but it does help I think with the dehydrating process that you've got a consistent thickness as best as you can all the way through I think the thickness is fine there now obviously the thicker you go the longer it's going to take in the dehydrator that's fine by me I've got the time so if you do want to make it thinner you will save time because it is going to dehydrate a lot quicker but for me like I said I've got the time so I like to make it just that little bit thicker that way I can hopefully get it all done in one batch, get it done, and then once it's done, it is done. I'm not coming back and redoing the whole process again with excess mix. So how many of you can see that little bit there and it's annoying you and you just want to wipe it up and move it away? I don't know about you, but when I watch other people's videos, I'll see a little speck on a backsplash behind their pot or something to the edge of their chopping board or their bench and I'm I'm wanting to reach into the screen and just wipe it and get rid of it and feel satisfied that it's gone so for all of you people out there like me that do that there you go I got rid of that little bit that was annoying you so now it's just a matter of getting all nine of these into the dehydrator and away we go as usual I get some of my numbers wrong and there's actually seven trays, not nine. But yeah, there you go. I've got seven trays, not nine. Okay, so now I'm going to put this on and I'm going to be dehydrating at 55 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, that's about 125, I think. But I'll double check and I'll pop it on the screen right now. So that should be the Fahrenheit number on the screen as I'm pointing. And at 55 degrees, look, I'm going to put the timer on for, say, 15 hours. But when it gets to about, say, 9 hours, or probably even 8 hours, I'll really be checking it every hour to make sure. Because I can't give you an exact time because the thickness is always going to vary and you really need to check it yourself. For you, it's going to depend on your dehydrator, or if you do it in the oven, it depends on your oven. So as far as time goes, look, I will say you're looking at roughly 10 to 12 hours, but that's a rough guide. It's, I guess, an estimation. So 
I will just put it on at 55 degrees Celsius, check it, and at the end of this video, I'll tell you exactly how long it took me. Thanks. Okay, so here we are, everybody. It's now about 14 hours later, and all the trays are pretty much looking like this. So as you can see, it's like one great big fruit leather type thing. There we go, I just turn it over. Now, speaking of turning it over, what I do is that about six hours into it, it all starts to look like this. So I will lift a corner, I'll do it from your end. I will lift a corner and bend the sheet down and separate it. And then quite easily, just, well, that just broke because it's dehydrated, but I will bend it and peel it back, lift the whole thing off and flip it over. And then what I'll do is I'll actually turn the tray around in the dehydrator and even change levels on the shelf just to try to ensure that all seven trays are getting an even heating all the way through at the front, the back, the sides, the middle, you name it. Because I do notice that after say that six hour mark, when I pull it out, you will see maybe like a circle here where it's slightly moist and it's not getting as much heat as say the cracked bit at the front. So yeah, I do like to turn my trays around and flip the mix over just to make sure that I can try and maximize the amount of heat that's getting spread through the actual ingredient that I've got in the dehydrator at the time. In this case, this butternut squash mix. Okay, time to get the powder going in this brand new Optimum 8200 high speed nutri extractor. Now I just wanna make it clear again that this was actually gifted to me by the people at Fruity. And I want to make it clear to everybody out there that I'll be giving honest opinions on this and any comments about it will be honest and fair and I don't want to compromise myself and my channel just to try and get things from sponsors. So unfortunately, if something doesn't go great, you will hear about it. But having said that, I've used this to make the puree so far and it's pretty good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to see what this powder does. Check this out. I've actually cut myself just here. So yeah, watch out everybody. These are actually quite sharp. Okay, so just an experiment for me here. I'm taking the cloth away and putting the lid on properly as the machine's supposed to be used. And I'm just gonna see what sort of powder comes out of the machine at all while blending on high speed with the powder. Okay, so after starting with a cloth, obviously I've been using other machines in the past. I clearly don't need to use a cloth with this Optimum 8200. But yeah, I'm really happy everybody. I've, I'm not used to blending ingredients with a blender or a food processor and not covering it because of the dust that escapes from the edges or the top or wherever with the lid on. So, Oh man, I'm so happy everyone. This is really cool for me anyway, at least. I'm wrapped. Let's get this jug down here and get the lid off. Let's take this damper out. Oh wow, that powder looks fantastic on there. I'll just sit that in my mixing bowl, which is where my powder is going to go. Oh, the smell is fantastic, oh man. And I'm just using the scraper that comes with the machine. Just to push that powder down into the rest of the mix. So there we go, that's batch number two done. So what I'm going to do now is this is the two batches. I'm just gonna pop them all together now onto a low speed 
and just give it a bit of a blend together and to break up these lumps. Now with my powders, I do like to run them through a sieve just to catch any foreign objects or maybe some hard pieces from the dehydrating process. And I don't know if you can see it properly there, but there really is minimal specks in there from that whole batch. So now I've got the most delicate, light, fluffy butternut powder or butternut flour, which is going to go to so many recipes and make so many cool things. So for me now, it's just a matter of popping this into a jar, vac sealing it, getting it stored away, and yep, on to the next batch. So my butternut powder or butternut flour gets used in scones, breads, bread rolls, cakes. We make soups with it. It goes into stews, it goes into casseroles. There's so many things you can do with this stuff. I love making this powder. I make other vegetable powders, but this is definitely one of my favorites. So there you go. That's my powder in my jar, vac sealed, ready for storage. Now just give it a couple of days and I highly recommend that you just keep an eye on it and just look for signs of moisture, stickiness to the side of the jar or lumps or anything like that. If you think that you've got any type of moisture in that mix, please take it out pour it onto the sheets and get them back into the dehydrator and dehydrate your powder. If you want to keep it long term, you really need to make sure there's as much moisture as possible taken out of this powder. But for me, that looks fantastic. As you can see, I've already got my next lot of dehydrating going. Please check out this video on the screen right now. It'll show you a lot more other dehydrating tips, tricks and ideas that I have here. Please consider the old thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for future videos and I will see you next time. Bye.